What's up internet base modding people? Today I'm going to throw my P base on the bench. Needs a bit of TLC, but while I've got it apart, I'm actually going to film some frequency sweeps of the pickup. Uh, I'm going to talk about how these simple passive circuits actually work, uh, try a few different tone caps, um, and look at the effects that the pot and even your guitar lead have on your sound. Stick around, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be mildly informative. Okay, I'm going to try and just make it not suck too much. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got the 73 P Base pickup on the bench. Um, I have a driver coil taped to one of the to one of the pickup coils. Because the coils are in series in a P-Base, there's no need to induce um, both coils. Um, this little circuit is an impedance matching circuit for the driver coil to interface with my USB oscilloscope. Um, that's its power supply. Uh, you can see I've soldered a, a stiff piece of wire to the shielding material on the, on the uh, circuit, and it makes a convenient place to earth all of these probes and uh, alligator clips. Uh, I think the first thing I'll do is um, wire the pickup directly to the oscilloscope and uh, run a frequency sweep and I'll show you that first. The scope has a 1 meg input impedance and that is pretty typical of uh, preamps and, and uh, amps and so on and pedals often will have a 1 meg input impedance. Um, and this will give you an idea of the full frequency sort of potential of this pickup. All right, so we've got a very big spike or peak at 4K, and then you can see that it just drops off very rapidly after that. That may surprise you because, you know, a big peak in four, at, at 4K would be very obvious to hear, but of course, with a P bass being a passive instrument, there's loading effects of the cable and the pots. So we're going to have a look at what effect those different components have. Guitar cables vary quite a bit in capacitance. Uh, this is just a lead from my workshop. It's three meters long and has about 400 picofarads of capacitance. The leads I normally use, the ones in my gig bag, are I think four meters long and a bit higher quality than this. Uh, but that's, a, that's fairly typical of guitar cables to be around that 100 picofarads per meter mark. They do vary though, as I mentioned. Uh, but that's the first thing I'm going to add to our test circuit, is a capacitor to simulate cable capacitance. So I've got my breadboard out. Uh, this lets me uh, add and take away components really easily. And the first thing I'm going to add is a 470 picofarad cap right across the pickup between the hot and the earth. And that'll simulate our cable capacitance. So the grey trace is the previous trace. And you can see that by adding the cable capacitance, this resonant peak has dropped close to an octave to 2.2K. So here's a schematic of the P-Base circuit. We have the two pickup coils, which are essentially inductors, uh, wired in series, one end of which goes to earth. And then the hot wire um, goes both to the center lug of the tone pot, uh, we'll come back to that, um, and then to the clockwise lug of the volume pot. Uh, when you turn your volume all the way up, which let's face it, most of us play with our volume controls dined, um, the wiper is shorted to that clockwise lug. So essentially what you have is this. A 250K fixed resistor between the hot and the earth. And that's the next thing I'm going to add to our test circuit. So 250K is not a common fixed resistor value, so I'm going to use a 220K and a 33K uh, to get me very close, and then I'm going to put that between the hot and the earth uh, to simulate our volume pot on full volume. So once again, the grey trace is our previous trace, and the red trace is our new trace. And you can see that the resistive loading of the volume pot has kept the resonant frequency at the same frequency, but it's damped it, so it's lower in amplitude. 
So here's my tone pot. It's a 250k audio taper, and I've got a couple of caps to test. This green one is a 47 nanofarad cap. This is the most common that passive basses have. Uh, this little grey cap is says 104, which means it's 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. Uh, so I'm going to put that in, and the other side will go to earth. So I'm going to start with the tone pot on 10 fully clockwise and I'll compare the difference between the two caps. Okay so once again the grey plot is the previous plot with cable capacitance and a volume control. Uh, now we've added the tone control. Uh, you can see that the this treble peak has been damped further. If you ever use a no load tone pot the difference in these two graphs is exactly what you can hear just as the tone pot reaches 10. Uh, you can hear that little uh, jump in the treble and that's because the tone pot switches itself out and its loading on this uh, resonant peak is diminished. Um, so let's try a different cap and see if it makes any difference. So that's the 100 nanofarad cap. Well you can see now that the new red trace has exactly copied the previous grey trace and that's simply because uh, with the tone pot all the way up, changing that cap value, in fact doubling it, has made clearly no difference. In fact, I've done this before, and I'm actually going to turn the tone pot all the way down to half rotation and switch the caps back, and we'll see if that makes a difference. So the 47 nanofarad cap is back in the circuit, and the tone pot is at half rotation, and you can see that all of this treble has been taken away. Now I'm going to switch the cap back to 100 nanofarad without moving the tone control. As you can see, the two plots are almost identical. It may surprise you that even though the tone cap has doubled in value, with the tone control turned halfway down, there's still no difference in treble. So now I'll turn the tone pot back to about 3 and I'll go back to the 47 nanofarad cap first. We'll run a sweep and then compare that to the 100. Okay, so even though the tone pot is turned down to three, there's very little difference between the 47 and the 100 nanofarad caps. So let's do the same thing with the tone pot on two. So now we're starting to see the transition from the resistive load with its gentle roll off to the capacitive load with its slight resonance and steeper roll off. The resonance created by the 47 nanofarad cap is around 200 hertz for this particular pickup and you can see this is right where the grey and the red plots are furthest apart. With a tone pot down to 1, a 250k audio taper pot will typically have a resistance of around 5 to 10k ohms and you can see the two plots have diverged even further. Uh, the 47 is starting to leave a lot more in the mid-range and has a steeper roll-off to about 2k where the plots come back together. And finally, with the pot at zero and effectively out of the circuit, uh, you can clearly see the difference between the two caps. And notice also that the roll-offs are now more or less parallel at 12 dB per octave. So what does all this mean? Well, if, like me, and I think a lot of bass players, you only ever use your tone control to roll off just a little bit of treble when you've got new strings, um, or to tame uh, an in-house bass rig that has a really bright quad box or something, and you rarely, if ever, roll your tone control back past, say, halfway, the good news is that you can stop worrying about what caps in your bass, because for typically three quarters of the tone control sweep, the cap's not actually in play and it's really the resistive load of the pot that's creating the roll off. In fact you could actually short the cap uh, like this, effectively removing it from the circuit and still have the same response from the tone control for most of its sweep. Um, I'll show you that in the screen in just a sec but it's an easy experiment that you can do by ear. Uh, you could tack in a, uh, a switch, for example, across the cap, um, or even more easily, you could simply run a wire from this anti-clockwise lug of the tone pot um, out under your pick guard. Um, and when you touch this to earth, say at the bridge, you're shorting the cap, and then you can gradually roll back the tone pot, switching the cap in and out until you can hear a difference. 
With the cap shorted, eventually the pot will start to act as a volume control, turning everything down, uh, but the treble roll-off will remain pretty much the same. So here, the grey plot is with the 47 nanofarad cap and the tone control rolled back to 3. I'll swap the cap with a piece of wire and sweep again. So you can see that through the bass and mid-range, the tone pot that's shorted to earth is just starting to act a bit like a volume control and, and rolling everything down, but the treble roll-off still follows exactly the same path. On the other hand, if you are someone who likes to play with the tone pot rolled all the way down or in that you know, first quarter of the sweep from zero upwards, um, then the value of the tone cap is certainly a factor. So when you roll the tone control all the way down, uh, these two lugs are shorted and this effectively removes the tone pot itself from the circuit. So uh, what you're left with is a cap, your tone cap, wired directly between the hot and earth. And this is just like our cable capacitance, also wired between the hot and the earth. And as we saw, 470 picofarads of cable capacitance drop the resonance by close to an octave. Well, 47 nanofarads of capacitance, which is 100 times more than that, um, drops the resonance something like four octaves to about 200 hertz. The peak here is very subtle, uh, but you can usually hear a slight boost in the lower mids just as the tone pot hits zero. If you double the cap to 100 nanofarads, that'll drop the resonance by about an octave to around 100 hertz. And if you halve the cap, it'll actually raise it by an octave to about 400 hertz. And now the cap is creating the roll-off on its own. It's a sharper roll-off than the rest of the sweep at about 12 dB per octave. I should also say that the frequency and amplitude of the tone cap resonance depends entirely on the properties of the pickup. If you swap your standard pickup with an overwound uh, sort of quarter pounder type pickup with more inductance and more resistance, your 47 nanofarad cap will actually roll off more treble than before because that resonance will be lower. Uh, on the other hand, if you use a passive P-based tone and volume controls on say a Stingray pickup, which is wired in parallel with less windings uh, and therefore much lower inductance and resistance, the 47 nanofarad cap will roll off much less treble and actually create a resonant peak somewhere in the mid-range, probably around 600 hertz, I would think, and it'll be quite a bit more peaky as well.